Good afternoon. It's great to have you with us today. I hope that you're somewhere and you can enjoy this beautiful day um, in fall. My name is Ellen Cusack. I'm the pastor at Alloway United Methodist Church and Canton United Methodist Church. And um, although we meet in person, I'm happy that we can gather together in this way. Uh, Before we uh, pray or read our scripture, I'd like to take a moment to invite you um, to some special services that we are holding at Alloway United Methodist Church next week, Sunday, August 16th through Tuesday, August 18th, each night at 6.30. Sunday night at 5.30, we will also be having a snack and dessert reception. So uh, I invite you to uh, come, take uh, a few minutes to fellowship before uh, we... um, enjoy uh, our speaker, the Reverend uh, Jerry Ruff. Um, We're really looking forward to this. Sometimes you just need a spiritual B12 shot and uh, you need some fresh words. So we look forward to that. You're invited. Alloway United Methodist Church. We're located at 10 Church Street in Alloway. If you have any questions, Uh, Don't hesitate to contact the church. So uh, today we're going to talk about the Jesus that we think we know. So before we do that, let's pray. Father, we come to you today, Lord, thankful for all that you provide for us. Father, thankful especially that you provide us with your word, Lord, uh, in which you reveal yourself, um, in which we can read about Jesus and his experiences and come to know him. Father, I pray that today you would give us understanding through your word. I pray that you would illumine us. And I ask that it would be your word in my mouth. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our reading today is from the Gospel of John. uh, And we're going to be reading from the first chapter. I'll be reading from the New International Version. So I'll be reading John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is the word of God. The reading uh, that we read today 
is a reading that we often use um, to help us realize who Jesus is. That foundational knowledge that he's God, he's the word made flesh. He's co-creator with the Father. It's an important passage to us when we determine our own doctrine, who we believe Jesus is. I have a question. Who or what do you think of when you think of Jesus? Think about that for a moment. What are your first thoughts as you think of Jesus? Maybe the baby in a manger? The suffering savior on a cross? Maybe the good shepherd? And I have another question. Throughout your life, maybe in different churches, different places, even art museums. What pictures have you seen of Jesus? One woman commented this morning that her mother always had a picture of uh, Jesus at the Last Supper. Maybe Jesus holding a lamb. There's a contemporary picture of uh, Jesus uh, holding up uh, a man. I remember a picture of Jesus knocking at the door. Also, Popular sometimes are statues of Jesus holding the world in his hands. Well, this week I started to think about how much our impressions of Jesus are influenced by what we've seen uh, about Jesus throughout our lives. I mean, when you think about it, everything that's happened in the world uh, either happened before Jesus, B.C., or after Jesus, A.D. Time is divided by his presence, the time of his birth. And Jesus said to us, Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. According to Jesus, how we think of him or what we believe of him and respond to him will determine our eternity, not just our life here, but our eternity. And what's communicated to us about Jesus, even by other believers. A friend of mine mentioned, uh, actually recommended this book by Philip Yancey called The Jesus I Never Knew. And in this book, he uh, lists quotes from two athletes. Norm Evans, former Miami Dolphins lineman, wrote in his book on God's Squad, I guarantee you Christ would be the toughest guy who ever played this game. If he were alive today, I would picture a six foot, six inch, 260 pound defensive tackle who would always make the big plays and would be hard to keep out of the backfield for offensive linemen like myself. Fritz Peterson, former New York Yankee, more easily fancies Jesus in a baseball uniform. Probably the Phillies think of Jesus in a Phillies uniform. Fritz says, I firmly believe that if Jesus Christ was sliding into second base, he would knock the second baseman into left field to break up the double play. Christ might not throw a spitball, 
but he would play hard within the rules. So if you were telling someone about Jesus, describing who he is, would you describe Jesus that way? I probably wouldn't. <laughs> but if we want to read about what Jesus did, we can read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can read his words. We can visit the people he visited. We can meet his friends. But we're still not there. When we know someone, and even if we know them well, we can still have our opinion of them broadened by meeting people they know. For instance, the more people I met who knew my husband, the better I knew him. When I met his parents, I got a glimpse of who he was as a son. When I met his sisters, I got to know who he was as a little brother. When I met his friends, I saw what type of friend he was. When I saw how he interacted with his daughter, I learned what type of father he was. And when we read the Gospels, they help us to get to know Jesus. But how much of our opinion has been influenced by the pictures we've seen and the impressions of others? You know, when the early church was setting the foundation of the Christian church, it took them almost 500 years to be able to put into words and agree on who Jesus was. In the back of our United Methodist hymnal, you can read the Nicene Creed. You know, the first version of that creed was adopted in 325 AD, and then it was changed in 381 AD. What is interesting about this is that one of the main motivations to develop this creed was political. I never knew that. Constantine was the emperor of Rome, and he supported the Christian church because he proclaimed to be a Christian. Um, he had hoped that if he embraced the church, that uh, unity would be brought to the empire. Well, there was a lot of conflict, and so he supported the church. He stopped the persecution of Christians, and um, but the Christians were still discussing what they believed. There was disagreement among the bishops. So he decided that they were going to get together and work this out. And so they met in Constantinople in 381. I was surprised at how much the political climate affected the church. I don't really like to make political statements in church because I like to keep politics separate from what we believe is a church. And yet in reality, there's always an overlap. My daughter in Florida sent me an article about a man outside of Philadelphia who was arrested outside an abortion clinic. Um, the charges were dropped, but later the FBI came to his house and arrested him in front of his wife and children. Now, I looked up articles on both sides of the agreement, and honestly, I wasn't there for the event. Yet, I've started to think that, as a Christian, it would be pretty upsetting to have the FBI come to your house and arrest you. He wasn't radical or militant. He was just a pro-life Christian who stood outside clinics talking to people and praying with people. But the political climate does affect us as the church and what we believe about Jesus. 
I don't know if you've ever seen the biblical drama, The Passion of the Christ. The movie was made in uh, 2004, and it graphically portrayed the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But when I watched it, what struck me was the political climate of the time. I guess I never paid attention. It showed the persecution of Jews and new believers, and it gave me a better idea why the Jews always looked for a Messiah who would rescue them and be a political leader. This was a case and where I saw was outside the Bible. Although it was based on the Bible, it's Mel Gibson's interpretation, but it did affect how I saw Jesus. But since we weren't here when Jesus walked on earth, we rely on various resources, not just to mold our faith, but to form our attitude. That's why it's important that we're familiar with the scripture and know what it says. If we want to know what Jesus said, we go to the Bible and we can read what he said. Even when you read your devotion uh, for the day, there are many devotionals that list uh, a Bible reference and then uh, a short story. Um, it's important that you read that scripture. Now, all of it, to see what the scripture means standing alone. It's helpful to have someone draw out the message for you, but you also need to read it for yourself. Think of it this way. If there was an accident here on Main Street, I couldn't tell the police officer what happened unless I was an eyewitness. It wouldn't help to relate what someone else saw. They would want to know what I saw. The same is true of the Bible. We weren't there. So God, through the Holy Spirit, brings us an understanding of his word so we can know Jesus, not just what someone else said. I would encourage you this week, if you get a chance to read some of the Gospels, you don't have to read all four Gospels, but read a little bit. And if you have time, read a little of two different Gospels to see how God used those individual writers to communicate their views of Jesus. For the next few weeks, we'll look at the Gospels and information about Jesus and see if he's the Jesus we know. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you want us to know you, to know Jesus. We thank you that the Holy Spirit gives us understanding. Father, be with us this week. Help us as we seek you and seek to know Jesus better. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen.